Wandami Bante and good evening everyone. Good morning everyone in the West Hemisphere. Welcome to the Practical Abhidhamma. I am Edmund. I'm the meeting co-host who will be helping Bante and everyone in today's session. May we invite Bante to start the teaching and may we invite the interpreter Bante to start the translation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. We will pay homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Dasa three times. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato. Sama Sambuddhasa. So today we have to start the next topic. As Ganka Udarana Visuddhi, I think you may have known this topic before, but today I have to review this one and also I have to introduce the previous Jama talk. Actually, long time ago we have already started. The one is given origination. So last week we have already talked about the implications of view. And there we have to know how to discern mentalities and materialities. And now we have to continue the next topic, Kankawitana Visuti, the implications of overcoming doubt. So we have a lot of doubts. Now what's really called doubt here? Yeah, doubt means we have doubt about past existences. In Buddhism, we believe there is a past lives, there is future lives. Although we believe according to Buddha's teaching, but sometimes if we cannot know practically, we may have doubt about the past. So now here, doubt is a doubt about past existences. This is the one kind of doubt. Now later we will analyze more in detail. Then doubt about future existences. But sometimes we also have doubt about our future. Is there any future lives or any future existences? And is there no existence anymore? We also have doubt about it. And sometimes we also have doubt about our present existence. That means our present life. Is it an Atta, ever the entity, or not? Then when we have doubt about one of these three, it becomes an obstacle to improve our practice. So as you have known that, as a sort of Pana, must overcome wrong view and doubt. It will be slightly different. Here we have to know, we have to overcome the doubt by inside knowledge. In our previous topic, purifications of view. In this topic, by inside knowledge, we can overcome wrong view, or we can temporarily overcome wrong view. But here, in this topic, we can overcome doubt about the past, present, and future by the power of inside knowledge. Now we also have to know doubt about the past. This is about the past. What's I in the past? That means I have been born in the past. 
Then we have also thought about our past. Was I born in the past? Or was I not born in the past? Yeah, and just was I not in the past? So this is the first truth. Whether I have been born in the past or not, we have doubts about it. Then again, who was in the past? If I have been born in the past, who was I? I'm a human being, a deva, an animal, or any kind of unseen human beings or, or unseen living beings or visible living beings. We also, can, we also have thought about how was in, I in the past. That means how is my appearance? I'm in tall, short. I'm like a, like a snake, eh? like a long. So it depends on our lifetimes or our existences. We may have different appearance. How was I in the past? We also have thought about it. Then five, the last one. Having been what? What I was in the past. That means we may, if we can know the, the first past lives, then what will be second past lives? After I'm being born as what kind of living beings, I was born in the past. So we have we have all these types of doubts. So these are five types of doubts about their past. So as Buddhists, we believe that we have past lives, but there are many things to know about the past. So here in the list, you can know who was I in the past, how was I in the past, have been born, what, what I was in the past. The last three is more difficult. Of course, the first two are also important. Was that what I have been born in the past or not? But if we can know who was I in the past, how was I in the in the past, and what having been what what was in the past, so we have already overcome the first two. The Buddha explained these five types of doubt about the past in Matthew Manikaya. So in the sense of Kankarujana Visuti, the purifications of overcoming doubts. We must overcome these five types of doubt about the past. Not only that, we also have doubt about the future. Shall I be in the future? Shall I not be in the future? Whether we will be reborn in the future or not, we are so curious about our future. We also we always do know, we wonder if there was future or not. Similar to the past, we here we also have, who shall I be in the future? Then here again, how shall I be in the future? So that means, if we have to be reborn in the future, we have to know who will be there. And what kind of, be, what kind of living beings, what is the shape, what is the appearance? And we also have doubt about it. If we can know the future, we can overcome it. We may not have any doubt about it anymore. Then the next one is, Having born, having been what? What shall I be in the future? I and mean, what will be the second future life? So maybe related to this life, we may have the first future. Now after that, what will be the next future? So we may have we must have known about the future. If we if we can overcome doubts about the future then our inside knowledge become powerful. 
You may not have many doubt about it. So these are doubt, doubt about the past and doubt about the future. How do we like 10? High kinds of doubt about the past and high kinds of doubt about the future. How do we like 10? Moreover, we also have doubt about the present. Yeah, present doesn't mean life, right? Yeah, present means only adult, self, soul, or everlasting entity. From time to time, we also have doubt about everlasting entity. If there's any ego inside our body that can feel, that can experience something like that. Then we also have doubt about that everlasting entity or ego or self or soul. Am I? I mean, am I? Ada. This everlasting entity. Then am I not? Is there no more everlasting entity in my body or in me? Then who was I? So if it is there's an everlasting entity, it's a who? What kind of living beings? It is. Then how am I? So that means how does it look like? Is it long, short, round shape, square, diagram, or, I'm sorry, triangle, or any kind of any kind of shape? We may have doubt about present life. Then again, we have. Where has this being come from? As we have talked about the past, we also have talked about this life. So what is our past life? Where has this being come from me? From which kind of existence? Where we are reborn in this human realms? And the next one is, where how well this being go? So that means, after this life, how will be through time systems? We have six types of doubt about present. So altogether, we have five types of doubt about the past, five types of doubt about the future, six types of doubt about the present. So these are doubts we have to list out according to Buddha's teaching. Then again, we also have to know the causes of the lives. If we wish to know about this present life, then we also have to know the causes of this present life. When we are reborn as a human being. So this present life was produced by past. Of course, we all, we all have known that there's a past. And because of past karma, we were reborn as a human being. Not only that, because of whole sang karma, we were born as a human being. We also know that. But Hosan Kama is accompanied by or supported by ignorance, we call in Bali Aweja, not knowing the truth. We, we may know as a human being, as a divine beings, as animal, this is called ignorance. According to ultimate reality, no human being. I have already talked about it last week. No man, no woman, only Namaru. Then again, we also have craving, attachment to life. We love our life. All the living beings love their life. This is craving. Sometimes craving, craving becomes very powerful. It changes to clinging. 
Or for example, when the craving arises, we will long for it. We will look for it. But when clinging arises, we thought it's essential. It's very important for us. We are trying. We are pursuing. This is a very powerful attachment. Very powerful tanna craving. This is called clinging. So accompanied by these three, then we have already accumulated formations. Wholesome formations or unwholesome formations or maybe unshakable formations. Yeah, we can see only wholesome and unwholesome. So we may have accumulated many, many wholesome commands in the past, but when it was, when it is going to give its result, it will be as coming forth. So these are five past causes. When we are going to practice vipassana, we must find these five things of the past lives to know that we are reborn in this very life because of past causes. Similarly, if we wish to know the five causes of the first past life, we must discern second past lives. So, <clears throat> related to this present lives, these are five past causes. Related to the first past causes, these are, sorry, sorry, related to the second past lives, these five factors must be in the third past lives. We have to understand like that. So the main thing is, these are the causes of our life. We have to know. We must be able to discern all these things to overcome the doubts about the past, present and future. So now we have to talk about the past again. Those who knows the past existences. So as we have known that the Buddha can know the past existences, of course his second power is extraordinary. He has extraordinary second power superior to any of his disciples. Nobody can exalt the Buddha about attainment. Then the first one is the Buddha. The Buddha can know past existences as much as he can. Now one more thing we have to know. The Buddha can know the living beings of the past lives of living beings by himself or other living beings following the rebirths and sorry, death and rebirths. For example, here we, we have to, when we are going to descend this very life, we have to go to reviling in consciousness of this life. Now we have to go back to the death moment of previous life. That's a relationship. After that, the Buddha can skip the first past lives up to revives. Then it can jump to the second past lives, death moment. Sometimes Buddha also can skip many, many lives. I'm trying to pick up only one life he wants to know. What he wants to know. So that is the power of the Buddha. The Buddha can know past lives as much as he can. He can. As, as much as he wish. That's the difference. So he can follow death and, sorry, rebirth and death, rebirth and death, or he can also skip many rebirth and deaths. So this is the Buddha's power. Then the second one is Pachika Buddha. Pachika Buddha also can know their past lives, but they have limited because they had to fulfill the parami, do a sankhya, and also 100,000 euros. That's why they can, they can recall their past lives. 
and for us as and care, as I do as and care, and our 100,000 years ago. Within these periods, you can know reverse details, reverse details like this. Then next one is Ekai Sawaka, chief disciple. Like Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Mahamukalana. They can also know their past lives. As we all have known that they are extraordinary bhikkhus. Since they have fulfilled Pamparami for one Asankhya and 100,000 Iru, they can also know their past lives during this period. They can also know death to, sorry, reverse to death, reverse to death. If they wish to know, they can also know following mentality and materialities. Now the next one is Mahasavaka. So Mahasavaka, yeah, you have already known that we have around 80 Mahasavakas, right? Very great disciple. You may have known that he is a superior, he's a, he's a, he's a foremost, and Buddha also praised that kind of people. These are special people. They had to fulfill the parami for 100,000 irons. That's why within 100,000 irons, during 100,000 irons, they can also recall any of their past lives. As I have explained before, revert to death, revert to death, or skip many lives and just pick up only one life, what they wish to know. So this is um, the power of Mahasavaka. Then here, Pakati Savaka. This ordinary bhikkhus at the time of the Buddha, or ordinary bhikkhus like us, or ordinary devotees like any of the listeners here? It depends on our parami. At the time when the Buddha showed, they can also know many of many irons, right? Hundreds of irons, only thousand irons. They can also know their past lives, rebirth and death, rebirth and death like this. They can also know their life very much in detail. They can also follow the mentalities, materialities, five gates, knowing in detail, many different ways. So finally, we have Anyatitiya, non body ascetics. Non body ascetics also can know their past lives. We can find many things like that. Especially when we study Sila Kanawaga. The fact is cause. There are many wrong view holders. They also have attained psychic power, but they still hold in wrong view. So that means identity also can know their past lives, but they cannot skip reverse to death. They must follow Nama Rupas backwards from now to the past. The first pass to second pass, like this. So they also have limitation. They can know only 14 irons. They cannot know very much because they are inside knowledge, they don't have inside knowledge. They are Western faculties, also not very strong as Buddhist disciple, like a blind man's walking using an organ stick. They have to touch organ stick on the ground. Is it, there's it any stones or stones or anything? They have to touch with organ stick first. After that, they have to move slowly. Similarly, nobody ascetics can practice psychic power. They can also know the past, but not so powerful as Buddha disciples. So these are 
the persons who can know their past lives. So again, we just have to know who can know the future. Devotees, Tamika. You can find this story in Tamabara, the first group. So actually he was the Buddhist devotee, also Dhamma practitioners. When he was dying, he invited the bhikkhus to chant for him. Did you want to listen some Dhamma type chanting or listen to the Dhamma? But at the time he was dying, that's why he also could see his Kama. In the other moment, we can see this one, Kama. That means all our past performing Kamas can appear. Not all, but some of our performing Kamas can appear in our chest moments. As, as if we are doing practically, like a newly arising at the time. After that, Kama Nimitta. Kama Nimitta means that we also say Kama sign that it will arise in near death moment. Kama Nimitta means there are some, some necessary factors for performing Kama. For example, if we are going to do offering, it can be a receiver also can be Kama Nimitta. The material we offer also can be the Kama Nimitta. Then the way we prepare also can be the Kama Nimitta. The location we live also can be Kama Nimitta. All the, all the happen or necessary things can be considered as Kama Nimitta. Then we also have Kati Nimitta, where we are going to be born. There are also signs, because we saw the destination sign. In his case, he has accumulated he had accumulated many, many wholesome gamas. He was also a Dhamma practitioner. That is why in his mind, Katinimita. Katinimita is divine beings. Many divine beings came to see him. Please come to our assistance. Please come to our arms, my kids. He always do mix listening to chanting or dhamma. That's why he just reached. Please, he just stop them. Please wait. Please wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. When hearing that, the bhikkhus who chant or who give dhamma talks stop, and they left. But. Not hearing any demarks, he just asks his parents, why my venerable ones stop? Then his children is blamed. All the people thought that you he asked them to stop. That is why they left. On hearing that, he said, no, I just asked divine being to stop calling me. His children thought that their father was delusion, have delusion, a lot of delusion, that's why near death moment talking aimlessly. Then he said, no. Okay, now I will, I will show you. Please give me flowers or colors. There are some divine beings, they are waiting for me on the sky. Then he just say, okay, may this flower, the color of flowers we hang, be or be hung in <clears throat> one or one of the divine chariots. Yeah, we are two seated chariot. It was hanging on the sky. 
He could see the chariots and divine beings, but his children could not see. So that means if we have very strong karma, we can know our future existence in our near death moment. Sometimes we cannot know it. Okay, this is just for your information, just knowledge. In near death moment, there will be karma, karma nimitta, kati nimitta. Actually, we have already talked about it in the mental process. So here we have to talk about Tibetan origination. This is the main point we have to know. Whenever we talk about the purification of overcoming doubt, we must talk about the Tibetan origination. Because it, it was explaining, it is explaining relationship between past, present, and future. So before I'm going to explain, I explain the one, I have to introduce one story because I have used the story, right? Even I have explained divine origination in my past, I think before this was, I have already talked about the divine origination and paternal relationship. So we have a one story about Charana Jataka, you can find in Jataka story. There's a one she elephant called Chula Subhada. She wished to be reborn as a human being. Then she offered fruits to the Pesika Buddha and made an aspiration. By this merit, may I be reborn as a human being, as a daughter of a king. Also, she also made many other aspirations here. The main point is that she made aspiration to be reborn as a human being. So her dhana is offering fruit. Her aspiration is to be reborn as a human being. Remember this too. Because I'm going to explain how to do this practically, right? So when we are going to talk about dependent origination, we also have to know past, commas, and present effects. As we have learned the mental process in the near death moment, Onodoravachana, mind reverting consciousness, there will be Javana, five Javana, five embodying consciousnesses, embodying my moment. After that, death moment. Actually, I have explained different types of death mental process. Yeah, just I just use for example. After death moment, there is a descending, rebirth in consciousness. So here, Javanas. These are Gamas. You have five Javanas, five, oh yeah, five J, right? Five emotions, my moments. They are the coming force. This coming force produces this revealing in consciousness. So in that, according to my example, my girl, she made Chula Subhara, as an elef she elephant, she also made aspiration, we also offer the food. So offering fruit is the coming fox here. She was born as a human being, this is the son, we want. So, in the near death moment, the karma he she has accumulated will appear as karma force. But actually, they have done, she has done it in the past. We call this is a sankara. 
So, in the actual time of performance is called Sankara. When it's going to give its result, it will appear as a gamma forms. We have to understand these two separately. When she was accumulating gamma in the actual time, then that gamma was supported by ignorance. Misunderstanding as a human being, as a lady or as princess, daughter of a king. According to Artemis reality, there's no lady, no princess, no daughter of a king. This ignorance. Ignorance, because of ignorance, there's also craving attachment to this kind of life. Then clinging, it became very powerful. It was very important for her to be able as a princess. Then accompanied by these three defilements or supported by these three defilements, she has accumulated formations offering fruits to the Pachika Buddha. In the actual time of offering is a formation because Sankara in the past. But here in the near death moment, they appear it becomes a karma or coming forms. So, these are the past causes of Padisanti. So, ignorance, craving, clinging, will support the formation, accompanied by these three, formation arises. The formation have done in the past, will appear in the near-death moments as a coming fox, it produces new life, but it's sunny. as a princess. So, as a human being, there's a Kamacha Rupas in the regarding my moments. The Kamacha Rupa means she may has body transparency, sex Dagi Glavas, and also her materialities. Only three. These are called gamma produced materialities in the, in the rebelling in consciousness, rebelling in my moment. So as soon as rebelling in, the rebelling in consciousness arises, they will arise together with these Kamaja Rupas. So together with rebelling in consciousness, we can also say five brigades. So this Kamaja Rupas is the material aggregate. In Bali, we call Rupa Kanda. Then we have feeling aggregates. Feeling that arise together with rebelling in consciousness. We also have perception aggregates. The perception that arise together with Rebelling in consciousness. The formation aggregate. This one is the volitional formations that arise together with rebelling in consciousness. Okay, here we have two different formations, right? The first formation is gamma. Gamma is the cause. The second formation is only mentalities. That means only mental fetters. Two different formations, two different sankara. So with the sankara, the sankara is hosan, unhosan. Yeah, in the case of formation, that can be volitions, or it can be any other mental factors. The next one is consciousness that arises in the recent moment, revealing in moment. So the five past causes produce these five aggregates. So if we are going to 
know the past existences. We just have to know what is our ignorance in the past, craving in the past, clinging in the past, formation of the past, karma of the past. Then we also can know our present. We are in consciousness, what kind of Nama Rupas arises. So this is the first part we have to know. But we also have some other materialities here. Uduja Rupas. Uduja Rupas will arise in the state stage of Parisandi, rebelling in consciousness. That means in every single my moment, there's a rising state, standing state, or straighter state, or perishing state. Three states. So Urja Rupas, the temperature produce materialities will arise in the straighter state of rebelling in consciousness. Then there will be Bhavanga, after presence as Bhavanga, together with Bhavanga, my moment, there's a Tirisha Rupas, my Mroju Matalities, they were rise. After that, there will be many other Bhavanga, my moment. So all the Bhavanga, my moments have five past courses, it will be the same. Aggregates, projects wine, five past causes. So now here in this case, I have already explained a human being, right? The elephant was born as a human being. After revealing a consciousness, there will be Bawanga my moment, or the Bawanga my moment, there are five past causes. Then again, cause of a relationship. This is, only, this is only a summary of divine originations, the fifth methods. So we have five past causes already mentioned before. They are ignorance, craving, clinging, formation, and then coming fox or karma. It will produce kamacha rupas, kama produce materialities. Then you also can produce receptive consciousnesses in this very life. Then we also have present causes. We have said in the very beginning of this life, we have mind bruises, we have consciousness. So in the moment of the Vanga mind states, there's also mind produce materialities. So if there's a mind consciousness, it doesn't mean all the consciousness. We only some consciousness cannot produce Kamacha Rupas. Most of the consciousness can produce. Okay? So that means most of the consciousness will produce Tiricha Rupas, mind produce materialities. So in my previous slides, it was already mentioned, the mind produce materiality will rise to the upwards Bhavanga mind moment. That means Prisadi Chita, revealing in consciousness can produce that mind produce materialities. So let me consciousness produce mind produce materialities. This is the first thing we have to know. Otherwise, the temperature. In every single Rupa Kalapas, for example here, Kamacha Kalapas, Kama Bruju Materialities. In the Kama Bruju Materialities, there is also fire element. This is also called temperature. Whether it's the heat or cold, we call temperature. The temperature or fire elements in the Rupa Kalapas can produce Udruja Rupas.
Then finally, we also have nutrients in every single rupa clavus. There is some exception in the rupa ligament moments, although there's a common, there's a the nutrients in the commercial rupas, then there must be some other supporting causes. When mother eats the foods, nutrients, right? also there's also internal harja rupas, also external harja rupas, when they meet each other, then there will be nutrient producing materialities. But the main thing is, is the nutrients it can produce Harja kalapas. Harja means nutrient produce rupa kalapas. So these are five past causes and three present causes. Here you can also know that Kamaja rupas, Tirja rupas, Uruja rupas, Harja rupas. These are materialities in our body. They have different causes. Kamacha kalapas are produced by past kama, past causes. Chitija, Uducha, Arjas are produced by present causes. These are different. For example, like we have Kamacha kalapas in our body, eye translucency, ear translucency, body translucency, because of our past karma, we cannot change it. For our Jirisya Kalapas, we can change. If we are happy, we will be active. If we are unhappy, then we have more, most of, more, mostly negativity. Our bodies are very, very heavy. We're going to move. That is Jirisya Similarly, when weather is a good, nutrient is a good, our body is very fresh. If we don't have good nutrients or good temperature, our body is very, very terrible. So these are present causes. What about mentality? So I have already talked about rupas, maturities. For our maturity, there are five past causes, present, three present causes. What about mentalities? Here, we also have said, resident consciousness. Right? This one, resident consciousness. Resident consciousness is also mentalities. It was produced by, it is produced by five past causes. But for all other mentalities, we also have to know the present causes. What are the present causes? Pains. For example, for our iron consciousness, we have iron face, iron base. If our iron size is very poor, we cannot have eye consciousness. I similarly, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind door. We have different bases, different doors. This is also one of the causes. This is a present cause. Then again, we have objects. Without an object, the mind cannot arise. Whatever there is a my moment, they are must be the object. The object is also one of the causes of mentality. So mind or consciousness cannot arise alone. It will arise together with associating mentality. So, for example, when eye consciousness arrives, there must be eye contact, there must be perception, and so forth. All the associated mentalities are also the causes. They arise together, they were perished together, they take the same object, 
They arise in the same base. They are working together, supporting each other. Then that is why for other mentalities, we have only three causes, three present causes. So, in brief, we can know that Kwakamajarubas in every single life, in every single my moment, we have five past causes. For other Chiraja, Puruja, Harajas, they have present causes. For a certain consciousness in the mental process, the resulting consciousness and my moments in the mental process are produced by five past causes. All other my moments are produced by only present causes. This is a summary of discerning cause and relationship in the dependent origination. Okay, now we have to talk about the story to La Subhada. In her life as a princess, so there's a Kamaja Rupa is near death moment. There are body translucency, calabas. There's also sex maturities. There's body translucency, calabas. These are Kamaja calabas. So because of arising of ignorance in the past, as she elephant, here Kamacha Rupas in the present in the present moment arises. Craven for the princess that arise in the past is the cause. Kamacha Rupas in this life as a princess is the effect. Clinging to the princess lifestyle a princess in the past is the cause. Kamisharupa in this very life is the effect. Formation, the kama of foreign fruits with the basica Buddha is the cause. Then Kamisharupa in this very life is the effect. Then coming forks of the gam, that Sankara the, the karma she has already accumulated is the cause. Kamaja Rupa in this very life is the effect. Then again here, the rebalancing consciousness is also resetting consciousness. That's why we have we can also to some cause of a relationship. The same. From the Bhagavad Mai moment, there's Tirja Rupas, Uruja Rupas. Maybe if there's a Supporting, supported by Mala's nutrients, there can be Arja Rupas. Then there it will be three present causes. So we have to design cause of a relationship. If we can know like that, we just know there's a cause of a relationship, past and present, present and future. If we know second past life, third past life, fourth past life, fifth past lives, do we know the first future life, second future life, third future life? Any future experiences, there's a person cause and effect relationship. If we can know all these cause and cause and effect relationship, we can overcome doubt about the past, doubt about the present, and doubt about the future. Because we must know the past lives. Without knowing the past lives, of what we have done in the past lives. We cannot discern cause and effect relationship. So in brief, in today's today section, we have already explained patana and origination in among previous topics. Also, that's we we have already explained the discerning namarubans together. When we can overcome the wrong view, I think last week there's one question. But 
uh, because of time limited, we cannot answer this question. Also, and then the, it does not come out. I have seen some message. Anyway, the question is, if we can overcome wrong view, that means we are so dapana. The questions are like that. But surely, when we can do some nama robots, clearly, we may not have any perceptions of self or soul or everlasting entity. That's why we say overcoming wrong view or unifications of view. But today, we talk about doubt. If we can know our past lives and present life relationship, we can overcome doubt about the past, present. If we can know relationship between present life and future life, we may not have doubt about future and present. So when we can overcome doubt, I think there will be another question. Is it Sotapana? As you have known that Sotapana can overcome or eradicate wrong view and doubt or skepticism. But here, we have one thing to know. If we can practice or if we can verify doubt by practicing, by understanding present, past, future relationships, then this is called Chula Sotapana, small Sotapana. He's not a real Sotapana yet, but his confidence in politicians become powerful, stronger. As you have known that previous practice, we can overcome wrong view. This also Sotapana sort of can, can do. But now here, doubt. We can overcome doubt. This also only for Sotapana. But here, we haven't attained any path and future knowledge yet. By the power of inside knowledge, we can overcome wrong view and doubt. That is why it's called Chula Sotapana. Okay, so now, when we can practice systematically in every single step, we have something to overcome. So last week, we talked about overcoming wrong view or purifications of view. We can overcome wrong view. This week, we talk about cause and effect relationship, overcoming doubt. So in every single improvement in our practice, there is an obstacle. There is something to overcome. If we can overcome it, we are successful. If we cannot overcome it, we cannot be successful in practice. So, may you all be able to practice as the Buddha instructed, the three trainings, and may you all be able to realize the final cessation, Nibbana, the end of suffering. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. For someone who wish to become a Buddha, mm -hmm. is that also because of Avijja Dana, Upadana, and Sankara? And how does these five factors uh, operate in order to fulfill the wish of the Buddhahood? Can Bane give an uh, example to explain? And mm -hmm. this also apply to uh, to wish for uh, Akasawaka, Mahasawaka, and Bodhisattva. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. Not Bodhisattva, Bodhi, Bodhisattva's uh, family member. So are they mm -hmm. also because of uh, Avijatana, Ubadana, and Sankara, and Kama, and any difference between these five factors for all those different wishes? Okay, and then so the third question is, uh, mm -hmm. the third question is, uh, Avijatana, Ubadana, uh, Avijatana, Ubadana, Sankara, and, uh, sorry, Avijatana, Ubadana, to become Bodhisattva, Akasawaka, Mahasawaka, and mm -hmm. the family relative of Bodhisattva. Mm -hmm. Are they always... Yeah. Would that, okay, would that make them to meet each other in the Sangsara? Mm -hmm. 
means those who have wish to become bodhisattvas, akasavaka and mahasavaka and the relative of bodhisattva, would this avijatana ubadana make all these people meet together in the samsara? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to know the parami, different different types of parami, right? Bodhisattva wants to be Buddha, that's why he has to fulfill parami very seriously. For other family member, if they wish to be okay, reborn as a family again, they do also have to fulfill, they have to, they must have the same types of minds, you know. You for example, okay. I will give one thought. You may know the Nakula Pita and Nakula Mada. I think we have one discourse in Agoda Nikaya called Samadhi Visuddha. They are mentioned if a family member or a couple went to see each other in the future existences of future life. They must have the same confidence, that means equal confidence. We call samasada. Samasada means equal confidence or equal faith, right? The same faith we can also say like that. Then samasila is also the same morality. Samajaga, also the same types of charity. Then samapanya, the same type, the same wisdom or equal wisdom. So if they have all these things, then they can be reborn together in the, in the same family. But here in the case of Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva have to fulfill parami. But at the least, their family must agree with the Bodhisattva, right? The same mind, that it will be possible. But for, for other family member, they don't need to fulfill parami very seriously. There's no matter fulfilling parami, it's okay. It will be, Two different things. For well, five fetters, okay. Avijja, Dana, Ubarana, Sankara. We have different Avijja, different Dana, different Ubarana. Because Bodhisattva was to be reborn as a Buddha at the end. For other family member, for example, like a Buddha's parents, they wish to be reborn as a parents. Different ignorance, different craving, different the clinging, right? Not only that, for a while, the coming forms, different coming forms. Bodhisattva may fulfill parami, very serious. Bodhisattva, he may offer everything, but the family member, dis, dis, if the family member disagree, he cannot do anything, but he may, they may agree like that, right? That's why for Kama will be different, similarly. Coming for, oh sorry, Sankara will be different. Coming force also will be different. That's why we have different types of coming power, different types of lifestyles at the end of the samsara. Okay, so I think it's enough for three questions, right? As Nami Siado, the fourth question also related to the question just now about mm -hmm. Deva Dada. Mm -hmm. Does that mean Deva Dada has already made wish to compete with the Bodhisattva life after life? Mm -hmm. And then this wish, is that a type of influences mm -hmm. that affect his Avijatana, Ubadana, Sankara and Kama life after life? Not quite clear. What does it mean? Means, uh, Deva Dada mm -hmm. has the the Deva Dada has had he make wish to compete with the Bodhisattva. And is it because of this wish that affect his Avijatana, Ubadana, Sankara, and Kama every life? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it can affect every, everywhere. Sure. But sometimes he can fulfill Barmi well, sometimes he can fulfill Barmi. Sure. This will be, it will be different. Okay. And let me say, uh, how to discern Avijatana, Ubadana, Sankara, and Kama? No, how to discern the karmic force in this Avijatana, Ubadana, Sankara, and Kama? And so called karmic force and mm -hmm. Kama, are they the same? Okay. 
Actually, we can say gamma or gamma sati or gamma forms. We just use the same. So sankara and gamma are a little bit, okay. We also say same, we can also say different. Okay, so both can be. Okay. Hey, my name is Yado. Uh, can Yado give some example? What type of gamma, gamma sat, gamma limita or gati limita? Will produce mm -hmm. what type of uh, uh, the correlative uh, life or beings? Can you mm -hmm. give an example? For example, mm -hmm. uh, and also if a person every day she has to face with animals, would mm -hmm. that would that be a cause for his near death moment mm -hmm. to make him see an animal image that will? Mm -hmm that will cause him to become an animal in the future life. How about those who like to practice in the forest? Would it be a cause to be make to, to lead him to be an animal in the forest? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we have the uh, with the Kama Nimita, right? Kama Nimita is very simple. That is only the Kama we have already accumulated in the past will appear as a present. This is the Kama Nimitta. What about, oh, sorry, this is the Kama, sorry. What about Kama Nimitta is the, I have to say like, like all the happen factors, assistant factors. I have already said, for example, we are going to hunt an animal, spear, bow, gun, all these things can be considered as Kama Nimitta. Also, like, the animals can be the Kama Nimitta. This is the first thing we have to know. The second one is like uh, as you say, this is Kadini Mita. In the just moment, if we see animal, sure, we can be one as an animal. This is called Kadini Mita. Then again, so animal in the forest, animal in the, in the house or anything, okay, it depends on the conditions. The main is if we have too much attachment to animal, so we can be one as animal. So that means it depends on attachment. Then also, right? Then also one of the costs, that's right. Then also, if we attachment to freestyle, like living in the forest, sure, we can be reborn in the forest. If we like many, many animals in our house, like a cat, dog, poodles, anything, we may have attachment to it, then we can be reborn as animal in the house. So, okay. Kadini Mita can be anything. It can be forests, it also can be like lakes, it also can be trees, plants, it also can be like a forest, right? It also can be a house, anything, like a, some of the animals have their own house, right? Nets or anything like that. Everything can be considered as Kadini Mita, okay? If someone has never fulfilled his uh, his word, never is not trustworthy, mm -hmm. and when in the near death moment, if this uh, karma arise, mm -hmm. would he be reborn in the hell? Mm -hmm. So that means if that karma appear in near death moment, she will be he or she will be reborn in the hell. Sure. This is very clear. Okay. My name is Yado. If a person has made wish, had made wish to become a Mahasavaka, mm -hmm. and also he has accumulated for many life such parami, mm -hmm. then in one day he he doesn't want to become Mahasavaka anymore. Mm -hmm. And he wished to attain arahanship. So practically, how should he practice in order to stop this strong? wish to become Mahasavaka? As long as he has not received any different, different prophecy from any Buddha, he can change his, his, his wish. It's okay. So let me, if you are now making that kind of aspiration, okay, in the past, in this very life, you may have that kind of aspiration, now you change. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now I know wish to be Savaka, any, Aka Savaka or Mahasavaka anymore. I don't wish to be normal Savaka. Right? You can change. Your wish is okay. 
Vandami uh, Siadong, if a person already practice dependent origination, he will definitely become a, a Chula Sota Pana, or he needs uh, to reach a certain level of knowledge. Yes. So, actually, Chula Sota Pana is a very beginning of Vipassana. We cannot say like, we cannot say very beginning, just omniscience of Vipassana. We haven't started Nietzsche to Kanada yet so far. Okay, so the main thing is, okay, here, according to your question, I have to say, we have already talked about the purifications of wrong view, purifications of view last week, now, purifications of overcoming doubt, right? These two purifications are very basic for Vipassana. After that, we have to practice namas, rupas, and their causes as Nichandruka Anatta. This is the next step. If we can practice many different ways of Nichandruka Anatta, when our knowledge becomes very mature, then there will be Sodapan. It will take a long time because I haven't started Nichandruka Anatta. Maybe next week we can do it, right? Okay. Okay, Wandami Bante. Uh, this question is from uh, Joseph Ting, Singapore. Uh, question number one, can you briefly explain according to the cause and effect analysis, how to, uh, how to discern uh, the present and future as what will I be in the future? There are many volition and sankaras being performed in present and past, can we really know which cause and effect will take place in the immediate future? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, yeah, in this case, we have to the some present, namarubas, then just follow namarubas to the future. In near-death moments, we have to know what kind of karma appear in near-death moments. If we can know near-death moment karma, we can know the future. Right? This is the, the way we teach the meditators. So future is a changeable. For example, now when you design as the cause and relationship, as a professional as practitioner, as a beginner, you may have maybe mm -hmm. maybe two or three future lives, or maybe you may have divine or divas future lives, something like that. But when you have mature, very powerful inside knowledge, it will change. The future is changing. Okay? For the Vipassana practitioners, the future is changing. But if we know ordinary people's future lives, or if we have like psychic power to know somebody's future lives, then it will be unchangeable. This is psychic power. For inside knowledge, it's changeable because we are Vipassana practitioners. When inside knowledge becomes very powerful and mature, we can attain Sodapana, Sakaragami, and Nagami any time, right? That's why it's future is not very sure for everybody here, right? Okay. No, you it cannot come everything. But many of them will come in the actual moment. So among them there's a, the most powerful karma where produce is the result. Because just the clearest, the most powerful, it will, this karma will produce future lives. Okay, it doesn't mean everything will come, but we can say many things will come. Okay. Now here in this case, we have to talk about the four types of karma, right? The, the first one is a karuka karma. We can also say mighty karma or heavy karma. The one is like a mm -hmm. In Myanmar, we understand like a Kanye Thai, you know? Kanye Thai me, you mean like a kid and parents, this is called Mighty Kama. Okay, so mighty, if we have Mighty Kama, no choice. We're gonna be reborn in the good destination. So more than Mighty Kama, we also have wholesome Mighty Kama. That is it, Jhana. So that means if we have attained Jhana, if we can enter into Jhana in near death moments, our future has to Sure, we will be reborn in the Brahma runs. This is also wholesome mighty karma. So if we have mighty karma, it will produce its result in the future. Whether we regress or not, no choice. 
Sa tao ay is it? Asana ka gama. Asana ka gama means near death moment gama. That means in near death moment we will remember some gamas or we may accumulate some gamas in near death moment. We may agree like that. So if we have that gama, it will produce future lives. This is second powerful gamma. The third one is Ajinaka gamma. Ajinaka gamma means habitual gamma. In our life, we may have good habits and bad habits. So if we have many, many bad habits, then this can be Ajinaka gamma. You'll be reborn in the bad destination or lower destination. If we have many, many good habits, it can be the cause of being born in the good destination. So this is the habit you will come. Yeah. The last one is the, oh, the katata gamma. Just action. We don't have, we have a nevaja purposely or intentionally. On the way, by accident, we have done some kusla gamma or kusla gamma. Kusan or ahosan. Then that gamma, is the, this one is a very weak gamma. Then if we, do, we don't have mighty gamma or near the moment gamma or have a gamma, that gamma will produce as a result. Right? So it depends on powerful. For example, Ajada Sattu. Ajada Sattu has accumulated many, many good things. He regrets killing his father. At the time of the Buddha, he is the most generous donor. He offers most of the things. That's with very big, the biggest amount of donations come from Ajada Sattu. But he has mighty karma. He cannot change his existence in the future, right? Similarly, we have another one, Udaka and Udaka Rama Buddha and Alara Kalama, the former teacher of the Buddha. And they have attained immaterial jhana. In their death moment, they can enter into jhana and they will reborn as the immaterial Brahmas, unchangeable, okay? For Hosan Ahosan, Mighty Kama is the most powerful, okay? Okay, Seado, uh, there's a question from Tien. Uh, Seado, how to practice Paticca Samudaya? Thank you, Sadhu. Okay, so it will be very, very long process. So that means, okay, I was explaining briefly. So after this, Nama Rupas, clearly, systematically, then we have to know our past lives, find Christian and Amarubats backwards. Okay, for example, particularly, we will do some karma now before meditating. Try to remember all types of minds, what kind of mind arises at the time. Then we will meditate, establish concentration, discern Namarubas. After that, we must discern mentalities backwards. The so back one means the mentality, when we are descending, Nama Rupas, the mentalities, mentalities, establishing one, establishing concentration, mentality, mentality, when we are doing some kusala before meditating, similarly we can go backwards, descending Nama Rupas, backwards, backwards, up to mother's ones. If we can know Nama Rupas and mother's ones, we can move a bit backwards to see the past existences. We may see the death body, we may not see death body. It's not very important. We have to know at least the my moments, mental process, and the near death moments. Now we also have to know the object of that mental process. If we can know the object of the mental process, we can know what kind of mind arises at the time. Then we can also know if we can know the karma in the near death moment. Then sure, we can know whether or not about or not the companies that come. Just move, descending backwards. So that means if we can know all the past causes, we can start descending because of which are in this in, in the past lives, rebuilding in concept in this very life arises similarly, Tanna and rebuilding Ubarana and rebuilding and Formation, Sankara and then revalinking, then Kama and revalinking, Kama Fox and revalinking, cause of a relationship. This is called Divine origination. 
we call this even origination first method. Actually, we also have the the first method, which is by Sankara. So that means according to the okay, previous discernment, we can say because of which Sankara arrives. Okay, now I have already said the story of the lady. In her past lives as elephant, she offer right. That Sankara is produced by Ovicha. This understanding as a princess. So because of because of Ovicha offering fruit to Pajikabura, there is a Sankara. Sankara Paja Vinyana, because of that Sankara, this very life, she has been born as a princess. This is Sankara Paja Vinyana. Because of that, that life as a princess, in the pre moment, there is Nama Rupa. That's why Vinyana Paja Nama Rupa. We can sound like that. This is called first method. Actually, there are many different methods of dependent origination. The first method, second method, third, fourth, fifth, five methods. There are many ways of descending, right? It will be very, very messy and very, very complicated. Okay? Please, Seattle advice. Uh, what Seattle recommended practice to people not yet know their past and future life? I see. I have already talked about how to discern past lives, right? With now, previous question. So, for about future, also, it will be the same, not much different. We have to discern. Nama Rupa, down to future, really, up to death moment. In the death moment, we must know. In the near death moment, we must know what kind of karma arises, then discern future, what kind of existences, what kind of Nama Rupa arise in the future. Then we also have to know the object of future lives. In the process in the future lives like that. After that, cause of a discernment. This life of which are Ubarana produce future life, right? Like this. So I have explained both, right? Okay. Um, Seattle, mm -hmm. I think her question is uh, is about uh, for yogis who have not practiced uh, and how to discern their past and future, how they should practice in their daily life. Oh, I see. Actually, in daily life, we have to be very simple. If you are practicing Anapanasati, let's do Anapanasati. Don't think about very far, right? So, okay, I have to say it's very, very simple things here. Many people also ask me, Bandi, what is the Nibbana? You know, then even in Pau Toya, many yogi ask this kind of question, Bandi, what is the Nibbana? Then whenever they ask this kind of question, I just give very simple answer. Just focus on the breath. Nibbana is not practical yet for you. Just breathing is more practical. So then if we cannot know the breathing, don't think about Nibbana. It's very far. If we don't have seen Nibbana, also if we have never seen a jhana, sorry, never seen Nimitta, don't think about jhana. Then, okay, now if we talk about the past very far for daily life, it should be easier. If we are doing Four elements, just do four elements. If we are practicing anapanasati, just do anapanasati. If you are, you are, you are doing buddhanasati, just do buddhanasati. It should be very simple. Okay? Okay. Sadhu, 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 Bhanti. Thank you very much for your teachings today. And thank you, our interpreter, Bhante, for the translations. Uh, may we invite Bhante to lead us in the making of aspirations and sharing of merits. Idam me nyadinam ho du, sukita hon du nyadeyo. Idam me nyadinam ho du, sukita hon du nyadeyo. Idam me nyadinam ho du, sukita hon du nyadeyo. Idam me punyam asawe kaya waham ho du. Idam me punyam nibana sa adio ho du. 
mama bunya bagang sava satanam bajemi te sabe me samam bunya bagang lavandu Thank you, Bhante, and everyone for your time and participation. Till we meet on next Saturday, may all be well and happy. Sadu, sadu, sadu.